somebody say, Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Now, if you really believe that, give the Lord a big hand clap here tonight. You may be seated. I believe there's a few people in the building here tonight who are excited about Jesus. I believe there's a few teenagers here tonight who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe there's a few people here tonight who are above the voting age who have voted that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, everybody. All right. I'm reading here tonight from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says in verse 3, If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whom the God of this age has blinded the minds of believers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. This next song I'm gonna do is a true story. It is an actual confrontation with evil. So what I would like to do right now is welcome you and invite you to a witch's invitation. letter I'd ever seen. A chilling little envelope bordered with flying bats and eerie serpents whose eyes were tinted green. Now, the letter was addressed to me, so as I opened it, I froze. What I read turned my complexion three shades of blue. It said, my name is Isaac Horowitz. I'm a male witch, a warlock, and I feel I need to spend some time with you. Now, as a Christian from a little church with God's call on my life, a man of faith and power with a challenge to grow, I did what any saint would do in my situation. I tore it up, said, Lord, no way I'm going to go. And gently and methodically, the Holy Spirit spoke and reminded me, we are God's voice to our nation. It's the church's responsibility to witness. So reluctantly, I accepted it this witch's invitation. He had the house you'd expect, the old English cottage, a nightmare on Elm Street special right to the core, the overgrown ivy, the gate that creaked when opened. Somehow you'd expect Freddy to answer this door. The doorbell rang a hollow gong, the knob twisted and then opened, and Isaac stood before me with a grin. His jet black hair and well-trimmed beard flowed with his black silk clothes. My skin crawled as he said, please come on in. His house was filled with every occultic symbol you could fathom. Hanging pentagrams, horoscope signs, a Ouija board and Dungeons and Dragons games set on the table, a crystal ball with an incandescent shine, and graciously he handed me some steaming herbal tea. Its presence caused my memory to jog. I thought of every horror flick I'd seen when I was a kid and thought, man, you drink this stuff next day, you'll be a frog. led me to a high back chair as he meticulously began to unfold his scenario with evil patience. I was given a giant leather bound book jammed with newspaper clippings, thus the reason for this witch's invitation. With eagerness he pointed to each article with pride. He said, I healed this woman through a Babylonian chant. You see this man, I cured him while performing druid worship. I was paid to curse this man with AIDS by his aunt. On and on, page after page, delightfully he flaunted each incident 
for an hour without a breath. He said, do you realize through my understanding of the dark regions that I can make you rich or even curse someone to death? I sat literally intimidated by his immensity and demon power, while his face shone with a satanic, arrogant bliss. Then placing his hands on the arms of my chair and leaning into my face, he said, what can your God do to compete with this? I knew then how Moses felt when his rod turned to a serpent and the three Egyptian magicians did the same. It's as if you're sitting there in that stunned moment where your faith gets violated and all you feel is weak, powerless, and lame. I desperately and deeply prayed saying, Jesus, give me wisdom. I don't want to put you through some foolish test. Then a shaft of light shot through my soul, igniting my eyes with fire. God stood me up and I threw the book back in his chest. I said, Isaac, I'll not compare God's miracles versus Satan's. The issue is not God's kingdom and Satan's lair. The real comparison is the condition of your soul and the condition of mine. And you puppet of the devil that I will compare. I said, my friend, one day they're coming for you. The soft associates and your incantations. The friendly demons you think you now control. The time will come when you'll be lying in bed, wheezing like a dying animal. When those spirits lay claim to the rights they own to your soul. Then the room will grow dark, and the most hideous evil faces you've ever seen will come flaming out of the floor with a yell. The vile informants that promised reincarnation will claw your spirit and victoriously drag your soul to hell. Then I grab the book and says, in that moment, which mantra, which incantation are you going to chant to tell them to leave you alone? I said, my friend, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what I would say. I am bought with the blood of Jesus. Let me go. I said, Isaac, when you tossed that book in my lap, you gloated with a sinister victory. You rejoiced when you saw your name in black and white. Now I rejoice, but not that your council of demons are subject to Jesus, but that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Then Isaac jumped up from his chair and screamed, You must leave now! I says, I will, but one last obligation. Next time, think twice before you rumble with a man of God. By the way, thanks for your um, witch's invitation. How many of you know tonight that there is a God in heaven who saves, who delivers, and who heals? Do you know that here tonight? Come on. God's love for you goes on and on when other hearts have failed. This love forgave from Calvary's cross where that love was named. But you must believe he wants the best Faith arise as I give you what I know. Well, I know there's a God in heaven who saves, who delivers, and heals. For He gave His Son. i 
tonight saved, delivered, and healed. Amen. Anybody out there? Night and day, he thinks of you. He hurts to see you cry. He wants for you. Brother, he hopes for you. Sister, you're always on God's mind. So trust his heart and lean on him and let the Father lead the way. Many things of God I still don't know, but through the years I've learned to say. And by his stripes, we are healed all the day long. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. But God was with him, and God is with you tonight. That's why I can sing that I know. There's a God. a question here tonight. How many like rap music in here? Anybody like rap music? Well, if I'm going to be doing any rapping here tonight, I'm going to rap about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, if that's all right. It's all right. Because I found out something. You can go to the tomb of Buddha and make a little discovery. He's still in there. And you can go to the tomb of Muhammad and make another little discovery. He's still in there. You can go to the tomb of Gandhi. I mean, they made the big movie and everything, you know, but guess what? He's still in there. But when you go to the tomb of Jesus Christ, oh, you ain't hearing me tonight. I said, when you go to the tomb of Jesus Christ, there's a little sign on the door that says, he is not here. He has risen.
Yo, listen up, this is Major C, and it's time for a resurrection rap. So you be aware, alert, and tune in touch, and know that Christ is the Son of God. Word. looks that a strong armed soldier whip clenched in his fist laced with chips of bone they beat him hard from his shoulders to his feet and it sliced right through his olive skin just like razors through a sheet countless times the blood splattered as each inhuman lash was given and several times his knees gave way as his flesh just hung like ribbons then surprisingly, he turned his head 
Though the words he used were few, the soldier's face turned pale when he said, this blood is for you. Uncaringly, they tossed a garment across his weakened form, and his blood pressure fell deathly low as the crowds began to swarm. They forced him to carry his cross uphill as his face they punched and smacked while the splinters from the crisscross beam dug deep into his back. Through lack of sleep and dehydration, his tongue began to swell. And weakened by his loss of blood, this prophet teacher fell. And when he did, some blood splattered on a man named Simon Shoe. And as he bent to wipe it off, the prophet looked and said, Simon, this blood is for you. And after all these years, this blood can save the soul, heal the sick, mend the heart. This blood can give you access to the very throne of God. And it still can go the distance through the pain to where you are. This blood is for you. The blood of the Lamb. Then they pounded a spike between the bones in his wrists, bursting arteries and veins. And as they dropped the cross in the hole they dug, his body convulsed with pain in an agony and a torment that never a soul shall find. What does he do? He tilts his face towards heaven with full control of his mind, with more love than any human heard. statement that to this day makes the strongest skeptic wince. He cried, Father God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And as he gave his life for those lost in sin, he was saying, this blood is for you. I don't care where you've been or what you've done, I tell you, this blood saved the soul, healed the sick, mend the heart. If you're lost and alone and your mind is confused, this blood is for you. If you feel like you have been hurt and abused, this blood is for you. The atoning, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, this blood can save the soul, heal the sick, and mend the heart. sing oh the blood of Jesus it washes what is come on every heart sing oh
That's why I praise him tonight. Oh, the blood of Jesus. You may feel like slipping up one of your hands singing. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. The scripture tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Any man says he has no sin in him is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That's why 2,000 years ago, the one and only eternal God put himself in a human body, and he went to Calvary, and he paid the death penalty for your sins and for my sins. That's why we can come to him and ask for forgiveness of sins, except to be the shedding of blood, there is no permission for sins. Some of you have had your sins forgiven, and you're thankful tonight. Come on, sing. I'm thankful for the blood. that whoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead the Bible says you shall be saved right now you can be born again here and now not waiting any longer for today is the day of salvation if that's you tonight you need to make it right with God I want you to pray this head with me right now dear Heavenly Father I believe that you sent Jesus to die for my sins on the third day he rose up from the dead conquering sin and death I renounce my old lifestyle I renounce the works of Satan I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior all the angels in heaven rejoice when there's a soul say come on, rejoice the salvation to the blood of Jesus come on saints the salvation your sins as white as snow give them a hand clap come on everybody oh magnify the Lord here tonight he's worthy in the center of the caverns of hell hidden under layers of evil that have thrived for centuries sets the morbid domain of the prince of the power of the air Suddenly, a scaly creature disrupts Satan's ghastly existence with an urgent message, and it reads, Code Red Problem, Conference Needed, Disaster Forecasted. With a disgusted annoyance, this General of Evil agrees to confer with his chief demon lieutenant. This is the story of that encounter. Enter. Oh, my lord Satan. Stay your business and make it fast. Sir, we're having problems of cataclysmic proportions. Where? In the east sector, sir. The damage is vast. Is there something wrong with my abortion clinics? 
Yeah, no, sir. That's all fine. We kill 4,000 unborn a day through, uh, shall we say, surgical removal. Good. It's selective breeding. We eliminate human life in the name of convenience, <laughs> like the Nazis and the Jews and with the government's approval. Is there a problem with my pet project television violence? Sir, it's covered from videos to cartoons. By the time a child graduates high school, he's seen 70,000 murders. Is this effective enough? Sir, just watch the news. Is there a disturbance in my false religion? Oh, no, sir. Business is booming. <laughs> Over 40 million are into New Age and Zen. Good. Over 45 million believe in astrology. Looks like we are catching up. Yes, sir. Only 50 million claim to be born again. Is there a problem with business in general? Sir, we're showing tremendous progress. Yeah. Teenage runaways, each year a million or more. Uh, uh, there's a teen suicide every 90 minutes. And your specialty, drunk driving, yes. will claim more lives this year than the whole Vietnam War. Well, is there a disturbance in What was that? Sir, that's the reason all these demons are on crutches and wobbling. What's going on? Sir, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Sir, that is our problem. Only one thing causes our warfare of this magnitude. Uh, then, sir, you know what we are dealing with up there. Yes, it's some of those sanctified... Uh, try, Bloodbot. Saints of God. Actually, presently on their knees. knees in prayer. Sir, they're literal holy terrors. They bind us, cast us out. Then they do those disgusting charismatic jigs. They call scriptures like the Son of God, and sir, if you don't intervene, we all might wind up in a bunch of pigs. <laughs> sir, that's the good news. The bad news is the subject of their prayers that threatens our survival. What they're praying for is causing hemorrhaging in the realms of darkness. <laughs> sir, they're praying for revival. Just erupt. It's hardly controllable. At the Azusa Street outpouring, things got rough. Yes, sir. And when the charismatic movement hit, sir, we were jumping out of windows. With all of that, to uh, untie my bow tie. Who stole my hand and stuff? Then I'll come in like a flood. But they'll say the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you. It's written in the Word. Weapons Sir, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That's in the Bible, too. Yes, I've heard. I'll hit them with every filthy, lusty fuck you can imagine. But it's written, resist the devil and he must flee. Obviously, the enemy is taking them out more seriously than we are. And that's very dangerous, sir. Especially for me. It's time to watch my final suspicious attack. I'll remind the saints of their past. How they were liars, cheaters, manipulators. Sir, you know what will happen if you remind the saints of their past. And what is that? Sir, they'll just remind you of your future. <laughs> Attention all saints of God, man your battle stations! Sound the alarm, man, and long to all men of every nation! We're kicking down the gates of hell, not stopping to their level! Put the sentence of destruction on the floor! Sleeping giant called the church is 
is light, and the light is the light that shines on the darkness of man. Now there was one sinful God, his name was John, who came as a witness, you see, he said I testify, Jesus is the light, so everybody, my Jesus is the light, Jesus is the light, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light, Jesus is the light, Jesus is the light of the world. Calling all saints, calling all sinners, calling every boy and girl. I'm telling you tonight, it's time for each one. Thank you. 